In this lesson, we're going to look at variables, optionals, forced unwrapping, integers, double types, string types, yeah, basically the, the most simplest variables you can write. And we're going to do it in a playground file. Alternatively, you could write code where you normally were, would in your uh, Swift class. Uh, and the, of course, this is just the game scene.swift file, the one that comes uh, included with the template. And I've, I've wiped out the existing code that's in here. You know, we could type in here and then just build frequently, but it's going to be much uh, easier and faster if we just work out of this dot playground file. So if you want to create one too, go over here to new, then file, and uh, pick out playground. It's over here under iOS source. Go to next and call it whatever you want and I would just get into the habit of always clicking off at least this target right here. I'm just going to cancel that. I've already got one and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put in here import sprite kit as well just in case we do later on in some of the videos use that and uh, you, if you're using Xcode 6 you probably have Coco right there uh, but in uh, 6.1 it looks like they changed that to a uh, UI kit. So let's begin. To uh, create a variable, first thing we're going to type is var and give the variable an actual name and then make it equal something. So we'll just say uh, var number, my number equals 5 and there it is right over there on the right. So it's telling us what that actually equals. And if you ever, ever want more details about what's going on over here, you can click this little plus button. Hopefully it doesn't look like that for you. There we go. And uh, uh, kind of get some more information. This, uh, this is so basic, uh, there's not much to show here. But uh, if you had like a for loop or something like that, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to go over there. But at least in this video, we'll, we'll kind of leave that alone. And what, what, one of the things I haven't done here is given this a type. But in Swift, you don't always have to, and uh, here it obviously figures out that it's a number, but you could be a little bit more specific about it, and you could say, my number is an integer, so it's a whole number. It could be negative or positive, but uh, the thing that it can't be is something like this. And you'll see right away that it gives you an error, it does not conform to protocol, whatever. If you, you did want a decibel, decibel uh, number, you could put in here double, and should have no problem with that and it's uh, obviously showing us that that equals uh, 0.5 and you could even get more specific by putting here something at float and uh, that would be that could give you very long numbers like that if you ever, uh, if you ever divide a uh, a number that would go unevenly into something else, for example, 10 divided by 5. Uh, you actually won't end up with that same error that we had before, uh, but it it's obviously rounding down here because uh, 10 or 3 doesn't go ev evenly into 10. But if we put, did put double right here, what do we get? Oh, well, I guess I was a little wrong. You can get uh, very long uh, <laughs> numbers out of that who would have thought okay so that's uh, that's one type we'll, uh, we'll leave uh, I guess some of these up here for right now and let's look at a string type so we're gonna type out uh, var and call it my string easy way to remember what a string is string of characters All right so let's do this string equals Justin that's my name and uh, that's a pretty basic one right there we could also get rid of that, and through inference, it figures out that, oh, well, that's uh, that's probably going to be a, a string value. Now, uh, let's make a string that doesn't equal anything. And to do that, uh, let's type string, and then just put a question mark after it. And you'll notice over here that it says that this is nil, so it does not have a value right now. If I did want to give it a value later on, then I'm going to just write my string equals Justin and you'll notice that you don't have to put that question mark after that one because you're making it equal uh, to something. Both my number and my string are kind of like real true variables where they they can change over time. You can also create a constant by writing let and essentially do the same thing but you uh, need to give it a value right away okay you can't get away with uh, this see it's giving you a, a little note here it says immutable value is default initialize it can never be changed because a, a constant can never be changed there's really no point in this because it's it equals to nothing and it can't ever change out of that 
Uh, we could though write uh, my string equals my string, or I should say my string two equals my string. And the error here is probably that I haven't actually, yes, this is a good one, and you'll see it a lot. The value of optional type string not unwrapped. Did you mean to use the exclamation point or the question mark over here? Now, we're going to put the exclamation point in here, and that's going to force a value out of my string. Um, because even though we gave it a value, right here it, it's a, it basically it, it, it kind of registers that this is unsure that it has one all right and you know in the the, the larger scheme of things uh, code is not always it doesn't always occur linearly like this where we go from here to here to here to here so it, it's 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 thinking well that that could be optional you know you told me that this was going to be optional so I, I really don't know and I can't count on you just assuring me that it has this uh, this value unless you put that exclamation point after it then I know that you're pretty confident it's got a value in there right and I think we could get away with that no it doesn't like it oh I and that does make sense because again we are uh, we are saying that this is going to be a constant and that would that would cause an error if we try to make it this equal to something that could be nil. So uh, there we go. Uh, and you know it's um, it's telling us right here that this is uh, that value. Another fun thing we could do is um, add a little bit to it. And this uh, now in Swift, it's very easy to combine strings together. And uh, I'll just uh, you know it's cool whatever. <laughs> You'll notice too that these are really strung together because it didn't put any sort of space in there. So feel free to put a space in. And oh. Just go ahead and delete that for right now. <laughs> Seems a little cheesy. How about this for a better, better example? We'll combine together our two variables. So I'll put Justin is, and then I'll write string, and then inside of here, my number, and that'll end up converting my integer value into a string. And of course, this is way off. I'm more like that old. But you can see over here it does say that Justin is 37. Uh, you can also test to see if something uh, has a value or not. So you might say if, and then uh, my string equals nil, then you might put in here uh, a value for it. Now, of course, uh, we've already given it a, a, a value, so that's uh, that's realizing that that is not a true statement right there. Uh, so you could uh, put an exclamation point right here. Uh, there's no connection between this one and this one. Uh, this is just how you test if something does not equal something else. So uh, my if if my str string does not equal nil, uh, then we can go in here and, and do something different. So we might say uh, my string equals Fred now, and you can see that it's printing that out over here because. This is a true statement, and it's just doing whatever uh, we tell it to inside of here. So how are you going to remember after this video is over whether or not you have to put in your exclamation point or a question mark? Well, if you declared a variable that you did not give a real value to initially, then you're probably going to have to use that at some point later on. Uh, but, you know, if you created it like this uh, my name equals Justin for sure uh, then you're not gonna have to worry about that uh, later on right and let's prove that so there you go no errors at all but as soon as we undo this and go back to it uh, being optional do have to include that in there and I should mention that it is easier to figure this out with your own variables and things like that, but you're going to come across properties uh, for classes uh, that you just don't really know right away if, if it's a optional or not. Uh, so fortunately, the, the code hints in here will tell you a lot of the time if you need to add an uh, exclamation point.